This is beautiful blue forbidden fruit straight out of the Audi, well actually straight out of the Porsche factory. This is the Audi RS2. <laughs> Before we get full on nerd with the Audi RS2, I want to take just 20 seconds to thank our sponsors, SolarWorks, part of the KW Suspension Group. Now, I know there's a lot of RS2s rocking a primo set of KWs, but if you have a daily driver or a street oriented car in the USA or Canada, please do check out SolarWorks. They make mighty fine suspension and indeed are all car nerds. So thank you so much to SolarWorks for making today's video possible. Now. Let's nerd. 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 The Audi RS2. Oh my god. You you know I'm ready to full on just nerd out over this. In fact, yeah, there's there's some goosebumps about it because this in the mid 90s, 1994 was a supercar essentially wrapped in a family sedan because it is based on the Audi 80 Avant. My dad owned one of those and they were not an exciting car. That was a standard middle management Good choice, safe choice, nice warranty mate, it's pretty good. This had more torque at the time than a lot of Ferraris. This from 0 to 30 miles an hour out accelerates a McLaren F1 in a boring station wagon. And if you have seen, Audi just released the Audi RS6 which is a $130,000 dream car. And yes, this was a dream car. Somehow a family station wagon was hung on kids' bedroom walls on posters. <laughs> yes, it is an Audi, but it was not made in the Audi factory. It was made in the Porsche factory. And as you may notice, these wing mirrors are directly taken off of a Porsche. The front turn signals are literally from a Porsche. There should be a Porsche, well, light right there, and there isn't. There is a aftermarket scoop there, and it has Porsche wheels, which it should have Porsche wheels, just not these Porsche wheels. The original wheels were shipped from Europe separately from the car. Now this is one of the nicest examples I have ever seen. Why was this shipped from Europe? They were never sold in America. And because of the 25 year importation rules, we could not bring one in until they turned 25. Now I have brought a bunch of them in for my friends and for my clients doing the logistics, handling the shipping. And this one literally came in on the Volkswagen Audi boat with the brand new Audis and arrived yesterday. So we have pulled it in, dried it off, given it a quick spritz, and then it's going off to its new owner who wishes to remain anonymous just after we get done shooting this video. He has already bought one previously. This will be the next one or the next Audi Avant going out to him. But this one is about as pristine and original as you could possibly get minus some choice upgrades. So five cylinder turbo, Porsche brakes all around, Recaro. These are all the big names. These are all the fancy things that went into it. So let's get down and dirty with those nerd details. Nerding out on the front end, Porsche turn signals, projector headlights, the special RS bumper that only came on the RS versions. There was an S2 version, which well, didn't have quite as many nerd very cool go faster parts on it. And if you were wondering why didn't they make a coupe version? Why didn't they make a sedan version? Well, the front end you can interchange with the Audi RS2 coupe. You could interchange with the Audi 80 sedan. They never really said why or at least I haven't heard. Maybe you can tell me in the comments. Only thing I've really heard was there wasn't really anything like this on the market. This was just a hole in the market and they filled it. And even to this day, if you want a crazy wagon, this is the one, but let's stick around in the front end. It does literally say Porsche on it. So we've got Audi R S2 Porsche. So you would expect it maybe to say Quattro there, but no, they just went full on and owned the Porsche. Headlight washers, again, we've already talked. These are, these are not correct, but whatever. Those big grills though, that is all correct. The blacked out trim. This, this is what makes this so freaking cool. All right, let's, let's go talk about those mirrors, the handles, and the beautiful heck blend. Don't know what a heck blender is? Let's go look. Working our way down the side of the car, yes, they have Porsche brake calipers. And that is not like, well, you or me simply going and robbing them off of a Porsche in a junkyard and sticking them on our Volkswagen Golfs or something. These are factory original installed at the Porsche factory. And it's not just up front with those big Porsche brakes. 
two piston rear calipers as well. This thing really does mean business. Porsche mirror, literally just unbolt it from the Porsche, bolt it on here, completely interchangeable. Of course, electric, etc. there. Moving down, well, a completely standard Audi 80 door handle. Nothing fancy about that, but again, even the door, well, it's just, yeah, these are just kind of an Audi 80 event. Anyone know what that is? Yeah, it's the 90s. Uh, we needed like electronics and things, so that's, uh, yeah. Some of them don't have the roof bars. You could get it deleted, but yes, this one does have it, which is how they generally look in my mind. Moving around to the back, you've got your little spoiler, beasting antenna, very 80s, 90s. And on the back, the heck blend. <laughs> If you knew tuning in the 80s on your, again, Volkswagen Golf or your Vauxhall Astra or whatever it was, you would have a nice big reflective piece there, but the RS2 came with this factory and indeed the handle is even part of the heck blend, which is just the absolute coolest. But this only came on the RS2 version. The S2 in the normal 80s and 90s did not get this. So they moved the number plate down to the bottom on this very fancy bigger bumper with the big exhaust cut out as well. You can tell an RS2 from a half mile down the road because of this great big fun heck blend on the rear hatch. That's enough of the differences from the outside. Let's jump inside and yeah, hey, thanks for Carl. Thanks for the t-shirt. Let's go look at some quintessential Alcantara Recaros that came factory in this car. Let's go to the interior. This, this is special. <laughs> you know it's special when there is freaking blue weed carbon fiber. Even in 2020, this would be amazing in any car, but this is 1994, 1995, blue weave carbon fiber. It never gets old saying it. But also, yes, Alcantara, there is that most glorious of automotive vegan materials, the blue Alcantara. Yeah, you've got the standard switch gear here, which is straight out of the Audi 80. Very nerd fact, Ferrari actually used this switch on one of their cars too. So it's a Audi, Porsche with a bit that went in a Ferrari parts bin special. These Recaros are the same as fitted in the Jetta Trophy. This is a standard shape, classic, iconic shape seat from Recaro. These are the heated version. These are the black leather with the blue Alcantara with the horizontal stitching with the Recaro logo in the middle. These are just to die for. They are so wonderful and perfect. And yes, they were factory on these cars. As I mentioned at the beginning, this, this is not correct. It is the original three spoke steering wheel, but it has been tastefully upgraded with the Alcantara, with the blue and the blue stitching. But I think that's a nice upgrade. Otherwise, well, yes, air conditioning, but electric air conditioning, cruise control, things like that. Things that yes, in the nineties, you would want in your high end car, but yes, they were kept for the RS2 because this was not a rally car. This is an Autobahn Stormer. This had a mid five seconds, zero to 60, but it was actually underrated by Audi. So it would go quicker. And that zero to 30, I'm not exaggerating, was under two seconds. This car was one that you could have the kids in the back, sit here in your Alcantara with your heated seat on and your air conditioning and go out and play with the Porsches. This car is not meant to be brutal, this car is just meant to be one of the ultimate road cars, but it's still a little bit brutal. So let's pop the hood and take a look underneath there. The legendary five cylinder, the, the rally, the exhaust popping, everything. This is where it came from. Four valves per cylinder, 20 valves across the five cylinder and always with that glorious turbo. But the RS2 came with a bigger turbo and indeed it came with kind of bigger everything, bigger injectors, better flowing inlet, etc. which does say powered by Porsche. Well, really it's the Audi engine, but Porsche, yeah, they did the bigger camshaft. They did slightly different upgraded versions of the fuel injection, etc. rear flowing exhaust, all things that you want to hear on an upgraded car. Well, they did it. Again, this one is not quite stock. It has the fancy metal cover engraved on it, etc. These are not correct, but it did come with the increased bigger intercooler from the factory and a whole bunch of things. It did keep the ABS fairly standard there. Not to disappoint you, please don't click away yet. Um, it's absolutely torrentially raining outside. It is, in fact, let's here. It's brutally raining outside, which would be a great time to 
go and use that quattro all-wheel drive system, but this is somebody's pride and joy. This is a car that he does not really want to have stone chipped by Jamie in a dreary Pennsylvania. I think the owner is going to drive it quite hard, but we will let him do that. So we are not going to go and show you the famous turbo lag, which having built some big aftermarket turbos, eh, I feel like that's just a Tuesday. Yes, it does have the famous bigger turbo, but it didn't kick in until about 3000 RPM. So you had that 4000 RPM ish range to get that 310, 315 horsepower and 300 foot pounds of torque. But yeah, we're, we're, we're not, we're not going to go and do that. I think I might call the owner and double now nah, hey if we are right now you will see us launching in the rain in our favorite little test bit okay did i do it if not we love the owner we are very grateful for being able to, to film this etc now the quattro system if you don't know about the quattro system it's audi's all-wheel drive system but this one has the incredibly 80s magic button and it looks incredibly 80s because it has those lines that grid style on it this is to lock the diff and it's not for 100 miles an hour it's not really for well going off road i guess you could so if you're really really stuck in some mud or really bogged down you can hit that button lock the diffs and clamber out so i don't think we're doing all-wheel drive donut burnouts but yeah people have definitely done that in the rs2 for sure you, you want to know the other secret about these though yeah you know the S nissan skyline r32s you know, like, yeah, you know, thousand horsepower, ultimate all wheel drive, blah, blah, blah. These will do that too. No question. There are RS2s running around with 600, 800, 1000, 1200 horsepower because this legendary Audi five cylinder will withstand that much horsepower and it will take the abuse all day long these things set the formula for all of the rs's to come afterwards this is it this is the father of rs never sold in america audi literally made a video 11 months ago with the rs6 teasing that literally was a throwback video saying you couldn't buy it here until it was 25 years old because we have reached the golden era of the mid 90s and if you don't know about the regulations let's go into those very 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 quickly i really want to talk really fast about this i just get out of the way but let's try and do it somewhat normally in america we cannot bring over cars that are not sold as compliant for safety and emissions by the manufacturer and by the US government until they are 25 years old. You, you could bring one in and convert it to American standards, but it's really not practical or feasible and it costs tens of thousands of dollars, if not a lot more. I'm looking at you, Porsche 959. Um, but once the cars hit 25 years old, to the month that they were born, the US government goes, we don't we don't mind and there's a whole big story about that and gray market and why those laws came in but yes once they hit 25 years old they can come in unmodified you don't have to put on silly u.s bumpers or u.s headlights or u.s airbags or u.s emission control the car can come in and that is why the rs2 is able to be here and why there is so much celebration in the USA about that and on a car that they produced only about 3,000 of the fact that even I have brought in and I, I get messages from my European friends hello to all of you um guten abend saying stop taking our cars well we wanted them here in the first place I'm sorry but let's share in the automotive love worldwide and yes they are finally here and I'm so so happy to help this owner and the others bring them and would I like to have one in my garage? Yes. Can I afford it? No. I've got the Rally Golf, the sort of Volkswagen-y version, but like a hatchback-y, whatever. I'm not going to nerd out on that right now. This is the Audi RS2 Nogaro Blue over the blue Alcantara Recaros. Everything about this car is just perfect and spot on. And if you go in the comments and say the wheels are wrong, I'm going to kill you. Not really. Hey, please like and subscribe. That is it for today. We really hope that you are enjoying these car videos that we are doing. Thanks to Rao for filming. Thanks to SolarWorks for making them possible. Thanks to Recaro for hooking me up with this sweet, sweet t-shirt while I talk about Recaros, etc. But for now, wash your hands, wash your cars, and take care.